Hi guys! So Alexia and I were really really happy with all the positive feedback we received on our video we did together on women from the Bible. So we decided that we would do a second video and this time it was only obvious that we do one on men from the Bible. And so again we're going to compare and contrast different characters from the Bible. We're going to talk about some very very admirable men and some not so admirable men and their names. My first name is Cain. Cain hated his brother because Abel was just a better person than Cain was. And Cain got so mad that he killed him. And when Cain was asked where Abel was, he said, Am I my brother's keeper? He was a murderous and arrogant man, and there's no way I would ever name my son after him. Gideon, on the other hand, lived in a time of oppression. His people were being persecuted, and the Lord told him what to do to set the people free. Gideon went out and did everything the Lord commanded and was victorious. His men recognized how strong and wise he was, and they looked up to him. He was merely a fellow countryman who found himself setting all the people free, and he was a skilled warrior and devoted to the Lord and to his people. The first two men that I'm going to talk about are actually brothers in the Bible. They are both sons of King David, and they are Absalom and Solomon. And even though they're brothers, they really couldn't be more different. Absalom was said to be the handsomest man in all of Israel, um, but he didn't have a very handsome heart. His heart was kind of evil. He was just an evil guy. Um, he wanted to be king and he tried to take over the throne from his father. He raised up a group of people against his father and took over the throne and he just did a lot of nasty things and eventually he was killed. Um, and just not somebody you want to name your kid after. And the name isn't that attractive either. I don't find it attractive. I don't think it would really work well in English speaking countries. Solomon, on the other hand, is a name that I really, really like. Um, and unlike his brother, Solomon was a man of God. He loved God so much. And God was so impressed with Solomon that he came to him in a dream one night and said that he would give him whatever he wished for. And instead of wishing for fame or fortune, Solomon wished for wisdom. And God was so pleased with Solomon for this wish that he told him that he would have a long, peaceful rule as king. And people came from all over just to hear Solomon talk because he was so wise and he was faithful to the Lord and he was just a really, really good guy. Jephthah, Jephthah, Jephthah. Jephthah didn't have the best cards dealt to him in his early life, but... When he was older, he was called out to a battle and made a silly vow that if he overcame the enemy, he would sacrifice the first thing he saw come out of his door when he returned home. When he came back to his house, his only child, his daughter, came out dancing to meet him. Really, what else did he think would come out of his house to meet him when he returned from battle? He was foolish and thoughtless. Job, on the other hand, was a man who went through much suffering, but by his character was steadfast. In fact, Job lived a long time after the period of his life when he suffered, and it says in the Bible he was more blessed after his suffering than his life before. Despite all the hardships and despite him losing practically everything, he remained true. He was strong, he was faithful, and came out the other side stronger. Now that's someone who's admirable. The Bible says that Job died an old man and full of days. The next two men I'm going to talk about are Laban and Caleb. And Laban was the father of Rachel and Leah. And when Jacob met Rachel, he fell head over heels in love with her and went to her father Laban and asked if he could marry her. And Laban said, of course you can marry my daughter, but first you have to work for me for seven years. So Jacob was so in love with Rachel that he decided that that was fair, that he would work for Laban for seven years. However, after the seven years were up, Laban tricked Jacob into marrying the other sister, Leah. So Jacob had to work another seven years for Laban before he was allowed to marry Rachel. So Laban was really in it just for personal gain, and he wasn't thinking about 
feelings of Jacob or the feelings of his daughters, and just not somebody that I would want to name my son after. Caleb, on the other hand, is a name that I really, really like. It's my brother's name. And Caleb was one of the men who was with Moses when Moses brought the people of Israel out of Egypt. And they came to the land of Canaan, which was the land that God had promised them. And Moses sent 12 spies into the land, and Caleb was one of the spies. Um, they went into the land to see who was there and if they could overtake the land and live there like God had promised them. And when the spies returned, ten of them said that there were giants living there and there was no way that they were ever going to be able to um, take over this land, even though it was the land that God had promised them. But there were two men, Caleb and Joshua, who said that since God had promised them this land, that they should go ahead and take it because God would keep his promise. And um, Caleb and Joshua were the only two out of those ten men who actually lived to enter Canaan. Haman was King Xerxes' right-hand man, and in our last video, King Xerxes was Esther's husband, the king who made her queen. And Haman was a self-serving guy, constantly looking how to elevate himself and commanding the people to bow down to him. He craftily manipulated the king to have the Jews killed because a certain Jewish man named Mordecai wouldn't bow to him. Ultimately, his deceit and maliciousness caught up to him and he and his family were impaled on a tall pole that he had originally built to kill Mordecai. Now Mordecai, uh, his cousin was the young Jewish girl named Hadassah. Her parents died and Mordecai took her in and raised her as his own daughter. When the king of Persia, Xerxes, was looking for a new queen and rounded up all the maidens of Persia, Hadassah was taken also. Mordecai changed Hadassah's name to Esther to protect her. Through Mordecai's prayers and counsel, Esther showed herself to be like none other and became the queen. When Mordecai found out about a conspiracy to kill the king, he told Esther and saved the king's life. Mordecai is an example of a man who had a good heart and was a father to an orphan who he raised to be second to none, ultimately becoming the queen of Persia who saved the lives of her people. The last two men I'm going to talk about are Judas and Lazarus. And I know Lady Gaga recently came out with a song called Judas, but that doesn't mean that you should name your, so your son Judas, because Judas in the Bible was not a very nice guy. He was one of Jesus' disciples. He was a friend of Jesus, but he turned him over to the people who hated him for a mere 30 silver coins. So, not exactly the nicest move there, because um, that led to Jesus' death. And after uh, Judas had realized what he'd done, he ended up killing himself. So, definitely not a story that I would want to associate my child with. Lazarus, on the other hand, was a friend of Jesus, and he and his sisters um, were followers of Jesus. And he is a great example of what having faith can bring because Jesus brought him back to life after he had been dead for four days. Um, and I think that it's an extraordinary story of faith and friendship. Saul was a king of Israel and enjoyed it thoroughly. His vision wasn't for the betterment of the people, but for himself. He loved to be praised and when a shepherd boy named David had killed a giant that no one else, not even Saul, was brave enough to defeat, who was getting more chance than Saul, he grew pretty angry. The contentment he had for David quickly turned to hatred, and he spent the rest of his career trying to get David killed. Eventually, Saul was killed in battle, and David became king. Instead of Saul honoring David for killing the giant no one else could, he tried to kill David. He also had bad business practices and could never stick to a good thing. Josiah, now this, I am biased on the name Josiah because this is my husband's name and I love it. And Josiah in the Bible was a king. In a kingdom where there was a lot of evil and contention and the king had been murdered, a miracle needed to happen and that miracle became King Josiah. When he was eight, 
His father was murdered, and the people made him king. Though ignorant of the way the Lord wanted his people to live, Josiah's heart was one of the truest kinds. He went full force in whatever he set his mind to do. He had that special something that we all should strive for. One scripture describes him like this. Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did, with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength. That's a cool, cool guy. So that's it. Comment below and thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.